All right, good afternoon, everybody. It's Steve. Well, as part of our VCarve Pro and our Sunday evening blogs, Angle Staircase Panel Project, I thought I'd walk you through step by step what I did to construct the panels uh, for my ang angled staircase uh, panel project. Okay? Wow, that was a mouthful. All right. So we've got a we've got a, a copy of VCarve Pro open. We're going to go up to create a new file now. Because we are going to be cutting this down outside of the machine, I'm going to have to do my angles on top of my table saw. Only because by the time we figure the highest point on our panel for our stairs down to the lowest point, you're going to see that it's it's not going to fit on the table correctly. So, And we'll get more into that as we, uh, we commence with the programming, okay? So without further ado, all right... <laughs> We open up a new job. My width is 30. We are going to cut the job to the exact width that I want. After our panels are glued and clamped, I'll end up ripping the uh, I'll end up ripping the panel down in the uh, in the table saw. Okay. My height, as we measured it from the highest point on my staircase, was 68 inches. We're using 2x4 KD stock or 2x stock, uh, and my datum starting position is always in the center. Unit of measurement is inches. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to create a small little box, one inch by one inch. I do this a lot, as you've seen in some of my videos. Uh, this is just the way I do it. Like I said, this is not the uh, it's not the gospel, but it it works, and it's just another way of doing something. Okay, so let's bring him down to the very bottom corner. All right, once you have him locked in your bottom corner. This is what we're going to do, and this is how you're also going to determine your angles going forward on any angle job. Alrighty. We're going to pay no attention to measurements or anything else at the moment. Just bear with me. We're going to go over to draw a line, polyline under our create vectors. Let's click on that. I want to start one inch. I always give myself a little bit of extra material because like I said I'm, I am going to be doing this in the table saw so let's come down here we can zoom in and we're gonna start right in this corner alright as we go up you're gonna notice in the left hand screen over in here right here you're gonna see angle alright well let's come over to the other side of our screen. Make sure we got enough work room here. We're going to keep an eye on that angle because ultimately where we want that angle to hit is 35 degrees. We're at 36, 35.7, 2, and that's all I need for there. Now the other thing we're going to do is I'm going to come in and I'm going to build, I'm just going to build a big box. All right. Uh, just click apply and close it. Now we do need to come down here to edit objects, node editing. Highlight your box. Now let's put this corner right here and we're gonna put him right here. Alright now we've got our bottom fit. I came up one inch off the bottom. I started my node in the corner using our create vectors draw line polyline we set it at exactly 35 degrees now all I need to know is off the top of this node 36 inches and off the top of this node 36 inches so what we'll do is I will again I will just build a small box here it doesn't have to be anything major I don't care about the width but I want my height to be 36 point zero we click apply close it out now I'm gonna move him into place down here on the bottom and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zoom in I'm gonna highlight this top I'm gonna go back to node editing I'm gonna drag him down till I'm touching the top of this box alright we're touching the top of the box what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to selection mode we're going to highlight this, 
We're going to move him over to the other side, and we're going to do exactly the exact same thing we just did. I am going to come over here. I'm going to click Node Edit. And I'm going to drag him right down to here. Great. Now, this this now is our angled staircase panel. Now the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this little one inch box here. Oh, let's get out of uh, node editing and let's go back to selection mode. Let's highlight it. I'm going to drag him up to the top and we'll show you why in just a minute as well. Now I clearly went off the low of this starting this project but I, I measured off the high of my staircase now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click I'm gonna add a guideline a horizontal guideline and I'm gonna bring it down so like I said it's about on the top of that one inch box we can now delete the box I want an inch above and below because I'm cutting these out on a table saw I wanna have in the event uh, something wiggles or doesn't go properly inside the table saw itself well I've got that extra inch on top and bottom so I can always redo the cut if necessary alrighty what I want to know though is from this guideline to the very bottom of this job size so I'll just come over here real quick I'm gonna break out my measuring tool and I'm gonna drop it from here down to the bottom I can see that I have a length of 58.97 inches so from the very tip top an inch above and an inch below I would have to say that this reads exactly 59 inches it's probably my my hands drawing the measuring line okay but remember we added an extra inch to the top and bottom so from tip to tip we're actually 57 inches now my maximum travel in my machine is in fact 50.249 inches on my y-axis now remember we do all our programming here on the X horizontally but ultimately this will get loaded into the machine and it can go in it can probably fit just like this as it as it's seen but the reason I'm putting this measurement on to find out that it's 59 inches, not 58.97, uh, is because I need to know what to cut my boards down prior to cutting them. So what I will do now is I will come back in and I will readjust my job size down to 59.0 inches all right now with our job size readjusted down I now know that I'm gonna cut my boards at at least 59 I will probably just round up to 60 inches I'll make them five feet that's what I will glue and clamp them at as far as the lengths the concern and then when after uh, once the boards have uh, dried from the from the gluing and clamping I'll run them through my table saw to dimensionally get them where I want to get them okay now I told you I have not fully settled on a scene yet, but I'm going to basically show you with these panels <laughs> as far as the layout and design in CAD one idea. And I expect you to run with the open scene package any way you choose. I'm going to drag in a little scene here. Just a small little small little scene. <laughs> now right off the top, I already know that this panel is 30 inches wide. So what we're going to do is we're going to come up here to transform objects and we're going to set object size. I'm going to take my width, let's say, to 28.0 inches. My link X and Y is checked, so it automatically readjusts the height. I click apply. Alrighty. Now, I'm going to come down to align selected objects and I'm going to align them on my Y axis. Alright, now with our scene dragged in, and again, I'm, I'm not 100% sold exactly on what it is I'm engraving yet. I'm, I'm still picking away at this, but this is not a bad scene. Uh, we've still got a lot of open area down here. Now, this is the very bottom panel. 
One thing I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in right now, and I'm going to look at any rubble that I don't want. And I consider that right there junk. Uh, just make sure that under your edit objects, you're on your selection mode. You can go in, you can just left click, uh, keep one finger on the delete key, and you can get rid of things that you don't want, okay? Don't keep anything that may look out of place. I need, uh, let's see here. I don't know as though that's needed. That doesn't look too needed. But what I what I am seeing again is I'm seeing that the shoreline's a little empty. Well, let's see if we can't come over here, swipe a piece of shore, okay? We highlight it with our left, we right click, we copy, we right click, and we paste. Highlight him one more time. Let's drag him down. Alrighty. We can do the same thing with the other side. Now we just extended our shoreline. We can copy, we can paste, and we can use this same piece of shoreline for over here. And we rotate it. Put him up in place. Rotate him just a little. All right, now we've got all this shoreline. The next thing, well, I'm an avid, I wouldn't say avid. I love to fly fish. I certainly won't say I'm very good at it, but I do enjoy doing it. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, we're going to drop in a fly fisherman. And we're going to look at his size. Oh goodness, no. He's far too small. We're going to give him 9 inches in height. Okay, there we go. Now we look as though we've got a Scale-wise, it looks reasonable. However, he looks out of place with all of this stuff around him. So we would end up coming in here, or I would end up coming in here, and I would, uh, I would just left-click and, and highlight this stuff and then just hit my delete button on my keyboard. I come over here to the note editing. Uh, Let's say let's get rid of some let's get rid of some nodes here. And like I said, this is a real real quick once over. The other thing we're gonna do is we're gonna break the gaps here. We're gonna delete the span. All right. I'm gonna come in up here. We're gonna right click. I'm gonna delete that span. I've just gotten rid of everything over here to the right of me. All righty. I'm gonna click delete. Now I'm gonna come back into selection mode. We're gonna light all this stuff up and we're gonna get rid of it. Okay. All right. Same thing here. Let's come in. Try not to light up the entire uh, graphic though. There we go. Come back to edit objects to node editing. Let's get our nodes lit back up. Alrighty. Now we're going to come down here. We're going to do another break. Right click, delete span. Same thing again. Right click, delete the span. I'm going to highlight all this junk. Click delete. Then I'll go back to my selection mode. Build a box, highlight it all, and delete. Not just this this engraving, but any engraving. The little ripples around him, I don't deem look correct. I have no idea what that little tidbit is. These little bits of the fly line, we'll live without them. Now I need to connect this, and I need to take, uh, this was a pack or a fishing net he had on him. Well, right now it, it looks severely out of place so we're gonna fix that alright so we go back to our node editing we can delete these the right click or well, you can hit D on your keyboard I don't want him to look as though he's got a perfectly flat back when I know he doesn't alright we can rotate him up now what we're gonna do is we're gonna come down here under edit objects we're gonna hit the selection mode I'm going to light this up down here. Now I'm going to go over to close vectors with a smooth curve. And that's what we're going to do. I'm going to click that twice. Right now I've got my fly fisherman. Now I would work on cleaning the angles of him up just a little bit. But for the sake and the time of the video, <coughs> excuse me, I want to uh, I want to keep this in a timely manner. So but you do at least get the gist of what we're doing here. So what we'll ultimately do, uh, the last thing I'll show you, 
is you can also go in and you can highlight a lot of your rapids. Okay, highlight them with uh, holding down your left mouse button, right click, copy, right click, paste, highlight them again, move them wherever you want them. But try to keep, if you're going to use bodies of water and you're going to have little bits of uh, currents and whatnot, try to work with them, make sure that they all match and look right, okay? What I'll do is I'll bring you in the completed one. As we can see, we have 36 inches from top to bottom. Our fly fisherman is in place. I'm still going to take some of my little pieces here. And I need to move them because I don't want them to cross over into other tool paths. Same thing. That's all good. All right. Now, we have as of yet cut the tooling pass, but real quick we will just so that we can see what this looks like. All righty. All right. Now we are a little bit light, but that is basically what this panel will look like if I choose to go with this scene. Like I said, I'm still not 100%. We haven't sealed the deal on the scenes yet, but this is about as close to uh, as close to a decent one that I could put together using free vector graphics. As a matter of fact, I will make sure this is a newest uh, release from Open Clip Art. I will make sure that this is added to the library so that you have the ability to go in and utilize it, okay? Well, as far as layout and design and taking measurements, I hope all of this was clear to everybody. As always, if you ever, ever have a question, please just feel free to shoot us an email, steve at littlelittlewoodshop.com, or you can contact us through the uh, contact form on the website or the blog. Alrighty. Well, everyone, I hope that you had a wonderful Sunday. I hope you had a beautiful weekend with you and yours. As always, thank you for your support. Thank you uh, to my subscribers and my followers. You are keeping us alive and going as always. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And uh, everybody, have a wonderful week. I hope we can get, we can all get through the dreaded Monday together. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll see you this week for the midweek shout out. Okay, everyone, take care, be safe, be good, and we'll see you soon. All righty, bye bye.